three, two, one. Hello everyone and welcome to Beardy Chill's Knitting Banter, episode 22, Winter is Coming. Uh, welcome to Beardy Chill's Conservatory in Caithness, where I am sitting quietly recording on Tuesday the 14th of November. It's about 1.30, 1.45 in the afternoon. Um, Janet has been home, had had lunch, gone back to work, and I had things I wanted to pass on to you, and since I left a long gap between podcasts last time, I thought I'm going to stick an extra one in, because it's been a really exciting week since the last podcast went up, and there's information, so let's just get it out there and let people see what's happening. So what can I tell you? First of all, for those of you who are returning viewers, welcome back. It's lovely to see you. Um, I have two cameras on the go again today and I've got one sitting on eye level in front of me with a big hand. I have another one set high in the corner of the room just to try and shake things up a little. Um, uh, so those of you who are returning, welcome. For those of you who are first time viewers, Thank you for coming along and finding the podcast. I hope you enjoy your time with us. I hope you find something of interest uh, in my blatherings and gibbering like a budgie. Uh, because I'm throwing this one in quickly, I don't have any footage from the comfy hardware chair, which I love doing um, and which I will put back in for the next podcast. But this one, well, this one's just going to be here. And... I have quite a lot to get through. So let's tell you what is going to be in this episode. So there's going to be a quick what's been happening, a roundup of the last week or so since I put out my last podcast. Um, the big part, biggest part of today's podcast has got to be footage and interviews from Perth Festival of Yarns event on November the 12th. Winter is Coming, Knit Faster, which took place in the Salutation of a Tell in Perth. It was fantastic. What an absolutely super weekend. And if I've been at a weekend where there are vendors and I had to drive past multiple yarn shops to get there, yeah, there's some stash pluses, not any stash minuses. Although there might be minuses by the time we get to prizes and things at the end. Um, we've got works in progress. We don't have any finished object. Well, that's not true. We have a half of a finished object. Uh, and you'll understand why when I get to that part of the podcast. Uh, there have been two pattern launches. So I shall bring you up to date on the pattern launches and their associated cals. And the specialist yarns that have been dyed up for each project. Um, as I say, knit alongs, there, uh, there are knit along details and prizes to come out. There's a report from the Roads Retreat progress, um, getting ready for May 2018. Um, there's a little community update, thanks to YouTube. And a Beardy Chill new project. Pardon, you had some toast earlier that's decided to make me burp. So, where am I going to start? Well, I'm going to start by saying there will be an edit appears here because I have left a pile of stuff sitting in the other room and I'm going to run away and get it. I'll be back after this wavy interlude. I'm back again. Wow, wasn't that quick? I came through and set up for the podcast and what did I do? I left all of the stash stuff lying in the other room. I'm such a dumpling some days. Anyway, let's get on with the podcast. What's been happening? Well, since the last podcast went up, I have been working on preparations for... Pardon me. Oh, my nose is itchy. Um, I've been working on preparations for the Perth Festival of Yarn Winter is Coming uh, knit faster event 
because it was special for me that day. I had something special happening at the event, which we will come to. Um, I have had some of my normal happy family time with grandsons and son, daughter, daughter-in-law, wife. Um, so that's been fun. I've had a trip to the cinema, which was great fun. Uh, what else have I been up to in this last week? I would say basically, as far as knitting's concerned and bearded shield type things are concerned, that, that's just quite a lot. Uh, oh, I had... <laughs> um, there was something else which wasn't in the last podcast, which I'll tell you about in this one. Um, I took a visit into my grandson's primary school. As many of you know, I am a retired teacher. And my background is in engineering and technology. And having retired from teaching and surrendered my teaching registration, I can never be asked formally to go and teach again. But I have 20 odd years worth of technology curriculum experience. And having spoken to some of the teachers in Ian's primary school, they said they would appreciate a little bit of assistance with planning some lessons uh, for their youngsters. And I've known some of the teachers there for a long, long time. Um, some, have, some have been friends for over 20 years. And I said, yeah, I would love to do something like that. It keeps my mind active. I don't have to worry about the physical stress of teaching. Um, I don't have the responsibility for kids, for assessment, for anything else. But in terms of picking my brain, delighted. So I did what I do best. I sat and I planned a session for them um, around the science of what is energy, types of energy, how energy is converted from one form to another by playing games, having a very kinesthetic, active lesson for the kids to participate in. Um, and I built a lesson around bean bags and tennis balls and all sorts of things. And we decided in discussion that we would finish with something practical. And for our practical finish, we decided to go for fruit and veg electrical cells. So I had my grandson suitably prepare some copper coins some galvanised nails and he helped me to put plugs on the ends of half a dozen little pieces of wire. We dug out an old um, voltmeter that I had, I've had for donkey's years. Um, and we got some very low power LEDs and we did a little experiment to find out if with a potato and a lemon, we could generate enough electricity by creating two simple chemical batteries that would power an LED. And it worked. So I took all of this kit over, delivered it to the school, and spent time with the classes, the two classes involved, and with the teachers in the school hall as they worked their way through the sessions. And yes, I did chat to the kids and I did help the teachers with the input. Um, and it was absolutely hilarious watching kids aged seven to nine exploring science, exploring energy, um, being able to tell me at the end of the lesson that there were energy changes happening. Um, and when they threw a bean bag up, they could tell me that they had potential energy in their arm muscles and they threw it up and it became kinetic energy and it moved and then it stopped slightly at the top and then it fell back down again and when it hit the ground at the bottom the energy conversion they all eventually picked up on was the fact that they could hear a sound. Uh, and I was delighted, absolutely delighted that it worked so well. The teachers had a whale of a time. The head teacher in the school came uh, and spoke to me as I was leaving to say she had been in the first class who I had seen that morning um, while I was in the second class 
and she said the kids were bouncing with enthusiasm. They were absolutely delighted and they all could tell her something that they had learned. So she was very, very happy with the experiment. So much so that I've been asked to help the staff plan some other science and technology lessons that they can deliver in the spring term. Um, and I'm going to have a lovely time drinking a couple of cups of coffee and chatting to them and helping them to design little bits of curriculum that they can access with their kids. So that was a super experience for me. Having been in a primary school since I did my teacher training oh, when God was a little boy, uh, and seeing the enthusiasm in these little faces and the look of wonder on their faces when they connected a lemon and a potato or a tomato and a lemon or an apple and a carrot uh, to an LED and electricity came out and made a light come on was fantastic. It was brilliant fun. And it reminded me of why I became a teacher initially. Um, and it also reminded me of the amount of hard work that goes in for the teachers today who are preparing stuff for these kids. And I am absolutely delighted that I'm retired. I have to say, being there not as a teacher, just as a volunteer sitting in the background and giving little bits of verbal advice and talking to the kids, at the end of the morning, I was exhausted. There's no way I would survive in a classroom nowadays. Um, even with more mature kids, high school age, I don't think uh, I would get to the end of the day and manage a second day immediately after it. Frightening and beautifully rewarding at the same time. So that was part of my week, which was wonderful. And then we had a trip to the cinema, Ian and I, and Janet, and his mum, Sarah, and we went and saw Thor Ragnarok, which was wonderful. Brilliant piece of escapist entertainment. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, being a great comic book fan as a teenager, watching the Marvel superheroes come to life is great fun. Uh, computer generated imagery, phenomenal. Storyline, absolute comic book hokum. Who cares? It was fun. I hate people who overanalyze these things and look for a deeper meaning. Take it entirely at face value as a piece of comic story. Don't over-analyse comic books. Take them for what they are, escapist entertainment, and enjoy suspending your disbelief for that hour and a half or two hours and just immerse yourself in the experience. I know. How can I suddenly become critical of critics? <laughs> so that was that. And then there was the preparation for Perth, so we went off. Oh, pardon me. My nose is still itchy. Somebody's going to make me angry. Um, went off on Saturday. Janet and I had to drive off to Perth. And on the way south, we stopped at a yard store or two. I cannot say that it was just one stop. There were definitely two stops. So that means that there are three sets of stash, um, so much for stash busting, three lots of yarn added to the stash of different projects in mind. But we will get back to those shortly. And what I'm going to do now is before I get to the stash or to the nitty bits, I'm going to do the cutaway and take you to the Perth Festival of Yarn event. And I have to say, a couple of the vendors had time to stand and natter to me. I had a wonderful wander around as they were setting up in the morning, got a chance to chat to some of them before it got too busy. A um, couple of decent length interviews built in there with some really, really nice folk. And I hope you enjoy seeing them. Um, There's not much else I can say about it. Watch the video, enjoy it, and I'll see you afterwards. Back in a few minutes. Hi guys, uh, I'm Beardy Teal and I am in Perth at the 
the Bear Festival Yarn Winter is coming next Saturday event and it's Sunday the 12th of November and I am not alone and here with Aileen. Aileen is better known to some folks as um, and you will have heard her voice or you will have heard her name being taken in vain by Nathan Taylor and myself in the past. Yes. <laughs> Makes sense. And we're both here today because we both enjoy coming to the events that get organised by each other. Um, but I've got an extra interest in sitting for the past <laughs> today because... As you can hear, ladies and gents, the interference that has built up on this clip is absolutely horrendous. It's happened in two or three clips, so what I intend to do is to stop the interview clips that have got the interference, let the general wander round uh, the event happen. My apologies to those who were interviewed for the fact that their interviews have not come out as clear as we would have hoped. I will have a try and work with some audio software and see if I can find a way of filtering these clicks out. I don't know where they've come from. It hasn't happened on every recording that was made on Sunday, which is really, really strange. So until then, enjoy what's left and my apologies for the sound quality. And I have to say, I would be absolutely crazy to cut out this little clip of Eva Christie wandering around wearing uh, her test net of La Tulipe et la Rose. Uh, the shawl is looking really, really nice sitting on her shoulders there while she's doing a bit of a uh, live Instagram post. So thank you, Eva! Right, folks, we're back with the new voiceover. Um, starting at Flora Fibres, an artisan vegan fibre uh, preparer and spinner. And I have to say, the texture of these natural fibres, plant fibres, organically and botanically dyed, are amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, in fact, there's some in moustache. Well, here we go. Now, I almost managed to get this one wrong. This is Bead Crazy. Um, and the proprietor is the absolutely wonderful Maxine who is desperately trying to hide from me because she wasn't keen on appearing on camera. But boy, does that woman have energy. Absolutely super fun. Hi, Aileen. Nice to see you wandering through again. She was having a really busy day. Um, Mrs. Beardy Chill loved the beads. I have to say she did invest in quite a few in some Christmas decorations. Dorothy Wood. Um... Again, beading and crystal works, Varovsky crystal technician. Really, really nice stuff. Something different to see. Melted moglet dye works, um, yarns hand dyed by uh, Eva Christie. Perth Festival of Yarn with this game pattern collection with my own travelling textures shawl hanging over the chair there. Moving on to Strath Ern Fleece and Fibre. And what a selection of bright colours are available. Um, the Strathern display really had me going. I could feel the money desperately trying to escape from my wallet as I worked my way past this particular stand. And I held out. I, re I resisted temptation. I thought, I'm not going to give in. I'm going to be good. I'm going to get to... The end of the day, Mulan Yarns, David, um, Spinner and Erstwhile Dyer and a newly started male knitter. Welcome to the club, David. He's hiding because he doesn't want to appear on camera, but he has done before and he comes across really well. Alison Ruth Designs. Now, what can I say? Um, Alison Ruth Designs, absolutely wonderful range of project bags. They're amazing. And she was telling me that she's been adding some additional linings. She's been creating um, DPN rolls for storing your DPNs. Um, she has a nice range of slightly smaller 
bags on the go, just about the right size for a couple of pairs of socks and some pins. Uh, a really nice size project bag and I have to say I was almost tempted but I did succumb to projects from someone else and I am not going to say anything more about that until we get to that little section of video. Uh, let me see, what else is she showing me? Oh yeah, the, this was the DPN roll, uh, set for 5 inch DPNs. Uh, in metric money that would be 125 millimetres, 12.5 centimetres. Nice little rolls, all you would need if you're working with DPNs, absolutely super. And Alison is wonderful to chat to, really, really nice. Now, moving on, I came back to this stall and I succumbed and I had to buy because it was a really, really Nice selection of yarns. We're still at the setting up stage. I'm getting to have my wand around while the vendors are still unpacking and starting to lay out their stalls. So I struck it really, really lucky by being in early in the morning chatting to Eva. Um, and she said, why don't you get your filming done before the rest of the folk arrive? Uh, uh, and I don't know why it hadn't occurred to me. Uh, so that was absolutely super. As you would have heard, I appear to be suffering from my erstwhile erring and umming syndrome. Um, I'll try and avoid it. Tight knit yarns, a really nice range of bases, nice range of colours, lovely new young enthusiastic vendor. I did come away with one skein of yarn later in the day when I went back shopping I am looking forward to knitting it up because it does feel really really nice and what else can I say you know a lovely introduction to working with her festival of yarn some inspirational colorways some nice bases nice cheery personality you kind of really ask for anything else when you go shopping for yarns and some of these pinks, they were just out of this world. They, <laughs> they just screamed. Absolutely screamed at you. Uh, I went for something a bit more conservative myself, I have to say. But we will worry about that when you see it. I have reached my next stall and it's Kirsty Little Bee Accessories. Again, blethering away. Um, I won't tell you what the exact conversation was, but look at the amount of yarn the woman has been producing. And that appealed to me. That was nice yarn. A lad insane, it's called. And this lad insane, well, we'll wait and see. I could be tempted by that one. Uh, but Kirsty is not known just for her yarn. As you can see at the back there, there's a pile of project bags sitting waiting to go out along with the yarn and she was in fine marketing form i'll tell you she was blethering away and her long-suffering other half scott survived the entire event with great aplomb the man has knitter's partner syndrome in his blood he is well trained <laughs> i think that's what the, the way a lot of female knitters would describe their other halves Definitely well trained and having a wonderful time doing what he does. And I hope you enjoy the next little bit of film because I'm going to edit and move across to the other side of the hall. Hello, Cosmic Strings. I'm filming again. Yeah. You, keep, you keep appearing. I know, I do. And we keep appearing. It's far too much <laughs> So, 
Very right. It's not just the yarn still today. Adjusting uh, the display. Yes. Oh, no. So it can be actually seen <laughs> buried under mountains of it. Have you more hidden? You have well have more than hidden away, knowing you two. Uh, I think we've got one of e at least one of everything now. <laughs> yes. We think. Yeah, yeah. But we do have more hidden away. Yes, yes. you're right. There's a great surprise. Yeah. Old, old habits die hard. <laughs> we keep overestimating how much... Uh, you can fit on the table. <laughs> yeah. That on the table there. That optimizes. Oh yeah, that's amazing. It gets all the yarn and both of you. Hey. <laughs> I hate to tell you, I've got it in its widest setting, so it's actually covering from halfway through the pattern right across to the other side of the room. <laughs> right, um, here I am at the Great British Yarn Stall. Hi, Guy. Hiya. Um, I don't know if we've met before. No, I don't think we have. I'm John. I'm Better Sharon. Better known as Beardy Chill in the podcasting and knitting world. I see, I see, yeah. Um, absolutely amazing stall, as I was just saying. Your colour work is absolutely wonderful. Well, I'm blown away much. by the Tammies. Um, how did you get into this? Well, well, I've always wanted a yarn shop since I was back four and my grandmother and my aunt used to drag me to one most days. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I suppose about ten years ago I decided to go for it and so that's happened. But as things have sort of progressed and you start to fill your own sort of little niche, yeah. my, my real love is colour work. Yeah. And I stop all of Jameson's and that kind of thing. And Wonderful. Yeah. Funnily enough, I've just organised my first international knitting retreat and I've got a colour work tutor coming Lovely. away with us. I've got Ellie Langstrom, Gosh. Scandia, coming to teach that week. So be we're going to have a week in Rhodes next May herself, me, <laughs> sock magician, and we're about 33 customers at the moment. So Fantastic, that sounds it's amazing. It's going to be a great week's retreat. Yeah, lovely. Um, but you've got an amazing range here. Well, I try. I try and appeal to everybody, but keeps going back to the colour of it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thanks for taking the time to chat Lovely, to me. Nice to meet you. Um, I hope you have a really good day. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. This all started because I was at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Uh -huh. And I was like, surely someone will have something. And there was like two people and they were both it's selling linens. not incredibly linens, expensive and I was like, either. Oh. So um, I had a chance conversation with, do you know Louise from Spin City? Yeah, something like that. That thing is still recording. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in amongst your stock just while we're chatting and we'll turn that into an interview for the podcast and do some advertising <laughs> if you don't mind yeah, right here we are with flora, flora fibers an artisan vegan yarn producer and i am just being blown away by sea cell yarn it is, i said like a puppy here definitely is so how did you get involved you said you were at Yep. No, and then I had a chance conversation with Louise from Spin City, yeah. and just in passing I said, oh, I don't suppose it's possible, but can you spin anything that's not wool? And she said, of course you can, and I just like, kissed her at that point, I was like, tell me more, tell me more! <laughs> so then I got some fibre from her, I got a drop spindle, and then within two weeks I had a wheel on order. <laughs> oh dear. And uh, that's uh, where it all started, and then I discovered all of the different plant fibres I can understand why. Plants, botanical dyes as well. Absolutely super. The botanical dyes have such a nice light layer to them. If you're talking to Clyde and Lorenzo, the podcast, who are only botanical dyes, who don't do anything else, um, some of the things they can use. And they use sea cell and bamboo um, in some of the bats. The machine and the effect, it's not all, so obvious here. Um, I've stopped the, 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 I've stop
would like to be able to see a statistic gathered specifically looking at X market or Y market for a change. Um, because it's so easy to get ammo product now. It's really, really easy. Yes. But finding alternatives and having turning them into something is a really nice challenge. And as you say, the bamboo shop, I was just delighted to debate. The only thing I don't like so much about the bamboo is it's not quite as environmentally friendly in the production. No, it does not. It's not high carbon footprint. So in the growing, it's fine because you don't need pesticides and everything. And then once it's produced, it's fine. Not just the production process. But there are people who are working on a different way to extract the fibres, which is really environmentally friendly. But unfortunately, they're not quite perfected and it's not quite ready for it. And I think part of the problem as well is they don't really find places where it's produced, they don't seem to care so much about like, containing the chemicals of the runoff that just like, goes out into the water population. That's one of the things when you talk to local mills here in the UK that are so few of them because the um, secret regulations are not so. This is why I really like the Tencel. It's uh -huh. won so many awards for its environmental friendliness because it comes from managed forests, yeah. specifically for that, from eucalyptus trees. And then it's got an over 99% efficiency rating in its production. So it really is very, very good. That's wonderful. Listen, thanks for taking time to chat. And that was Per Festival of Yarn. Winter is coming, knit faster. I had a super time on the day. It was really, really good fun to talk to the vendors and to get a chance to catch up with one of my test knitters. Um, I didn't tell you beforehand that there was going to be an interview with a test knitter, uh, but thanks to Aileen Dickie Adams for taking the time to sit and chat to me. Let's move on. And where are we going next? We are going to... Well, I suppose we have to go to stash enhancement or stash additions or um, yarn rehoming. So many different people call it different things. So here we go. On the way south from Caithness to get to Inverness, you have to drive through Brora. And in Brora is King Craig Fabrics, one of my favourite little yarn shops. And I pop in and I see Sean and Pat and their staff. And it's absolutely wonderful. This time when I went in, I think it was their son who was on. And it was lovely to see him. He told me Sean and Pat were on holiday, but were due back shortly. So I hope they've had a really nice holiday. And we had a rummage around, not because I wanted to buy yarn. I had knipped in for a completely different purpose. Something I had knitted um, was sitting gathering dust in the house. And I had used um, Sean and Pat's yarn to create it. And I had said to Pat when I saw her in Inverness, if you want to, to hang beside some of the yarn to say, you know, these are our yarns knitted up um, into something different, by all means, have a, you know, have a loan of it. So dropped a garment off. And as always, I look around. I was told we're off to Perth, so you're not buying any yarn before you get there. And the next thing I know, my other half is at the cash register buying yarn. I said, what do you think you're up to? She said, well, I was thinking about scarves for the little kids um, at Christmas. And I found this lovely, fluffy stuff. And I thought of, she's thinking of the, um, the girls in the family in the sort of five to ten age group five to twelve age group maybe and she bought enough yarn for two or three little cowls or scarves fine absolutely fine and while she was busy paying for that i was walking around the shelves and i saw a label and the label said 90 percent merino 10 percent cashmere three pounds fifty for a hundred grams and i paused 
I've now read that again. In fact, there's a photograph of it. I'll stick the photograph up while I'm blathering. Um, and the colour that sprung out to me, I am not a great fan of super dark colours. But I do like things that have a bit of a sparkle and a pop to them. And the merino in cashmere that shouted to me that day was this. They're blackish, but I'll stick it there and you'll see there are lovely little flecks of yellows, blues, russets, golds, greens, all trapped in against that black base. A lovely tweedy effect yarn. Um, and I thought, that looks quite nice. How does it feel? And it felt nice. Um, so I thought, okay, Merino and Cashmere at that price, I've got to buy some and test it with it. Uh, it's, it's potentially too good. It's roughly a fingering weight yarn. And I thought, well, on its own, it could be all right. It might be a bit boring. It might need lightening up a little bit. So to go with it, there was some Merino lambs wool type stuff. Um, so I decided on this sort of heathery blue, heathery blue, what a stupid description. <laughs> um, because the blue is actually reflected in the darker yarn. And I thought for some little bits of colour work or something in it, they might work quite nicely together and they might make a nice cowl and hat combination. Haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do with it yet, but I have a feeling that it might reappear between now and Christmas as Christmas present material. So that was my purchase in Brora. I'm just going to slide it along this table out of the way so that I clear some space for myself. So that was okay. Then we got as far as Inverness and old age and a cold drive got the bit better of it and we thought we better stop off, have a quick bite of lunch or something, um, maybe get to the ablutions and then continue on the way down the road and Janet said I don't have enough yet for the scarves I want. Um, I'll maybe get some cheap acrylic or something to finish them off or some bright colourful acrylic to finish them off. Can you stop at Hobbycraft? So I stopped at Hobbycraft and Jenna went in to finish her shopping and I went in for a wander around knowing that I very seldom find anything to buy nowadays. Um, unless I'm looking for something for my stash of prototyping materials. It's a good, place, a good place to buy prototyping materials, especially when they've got the three for two offers running. And as I looked round, I found myself at the clearance section. And in the clearance section, there was some 100% cotton reduced to clear to £1.50 a ball. So... Sugar and Cream, really well known yarn, made in Canada from US cotton, um, comes in a 70 gram ball and there were three colourways which I thought worked quite well together and it was those three and I thought I'm going to put the three of those together into a single creation. Um, I like experimenting. I like to get away from animal fibres from time to time. I like swapping onto cottons and linens and other things just just for the sake of having a feel of something different in my hand. Um, and I'm very conscious of the friends I have out there who are vegan knitters. Pardon me, if you hear a rattling in the background, my conservatory is not in its usual format. The table's tucked away at one end because once a week I have a group of friends who are folk musicians who meet up with me 
and we come in here and we sit and we play folk music and we have a right good laugh, we have a cup of tea and a bowl of soup um, and we're all set up because we've got some practice and playing time tomorrow and I was rehearsing in the background so my baran is out, concertina is out sitting somewhere um, I haven't done concertina practice this week, I've been really really bad um, having been away at the weekend I haven't put in the rehearsal time that I promised I would so I'm going to get my fingers wrapped by the rest of the team tomorrow but that's okay I'll soon get caught up again um, I forgot what I was saying yes so I, I like to explore yarns from other sources just because it's nice to explore other textures um, it's also nice to look at the sustainability of some things and I had an absolutely stunning conversation with one of the vendors and you'll, you'll have seen it in the interview um, Flora Fibres and we had a lovely conversation about the carbon footprint of extracting and using some of the plant fibres um, so let's get all the way to Perth and to the event in Perth and I have in my bag uh, oh info for Strathern Wool Studio Strathern Fleece and Fibre absolutely brilliant time chatting there um, Beardy Teal's business cards some of those were given out at the weekend acquisitions so acquisition number one is this it's called Greasy Mechanic, the colourway, by Tightknit Yarn. Um, Tightknit Yarn was a new vendor for me, and I have to say, really, really nice. Superwash Merino and Nylon, 75-25, four-ply sock yarn. As some of you will know if you've been watching on Instagram, I have recently put my heel through two pairs of my all-wool socks. I thought I'm not having that happen again but I'm down two pairs of socks at the moment until I repair them I bet I just knit an extra pair so some sock yarn for me and I love the colourway the whites, the greys, the blues it's going to be really really nice super squishy and then well I happen to be passing I didn't have to be passing and you saw I did a massive interview with Foo and B from Cosmic Strings and I was talking to them about the same sock problem and I sort of fell in love with that and that colourway from Cosmic Strings is called Warrior and it's under Superwash Merino Wool 25 Nile and 75 Superwash Merino 4 ply fingering sock 425 metres 464 yards and oh this this was equally squishy in fact it was more squishy and the colourway just shouted pair of socks for John some speckle and pop I don't know if it's going to self strike I don't care what it's going to do but it's going to be a really really simple ribbed all the way I don't know if it's going to be a 3 in 1 or a 2 in 1 ribbed sock um all the way up and I'm, I'm just wanting to knit these for speed and for comfort no pattern involved keep it really really simple and enjoy what the colour does and then of course I said I stopped at Flora Fibres and you've all heard me talk about knitting for Emily um, Emily is my favourite woman at the moment because she is little, she's now about 10, 11 weeks old and I came across this which is called fruit salad as a colourway and it's, it's, it's soft like a puppy's ears it's, <laughs> it's the only way to describe it it is so soft and so squishy um, it is not inexpensive um, it's the fiber is sea cell so it's derived from seaweed avocado and pomegranate are 
the two products used to dye it because flora fibres only use botanical dyes. There's 194 metres, uh, 24 wraps per inch. It's a light fingering weight. There's 52 grams. Hand wash, warm and dry flat. Um, it, it is really, really nice and it's a, a gold and a peach. Um, now because the fibres are harder to get out, harder to process and it's hand dyed, it's a fairly prestigious yarn. Um, and because it's for someone so incredibly special, I did go a bit over the top and I spent 20 quid on 52 grams of yarn. I normally wouldn't do that. I would normally think that's more than I would want to spend on something for a tiny. But I'm very, very conscious that the winter is coming in and this is going to become a set of tiny mitts and a really lovely, cosy little winter hat. Um, and I don't, I don't grudge it because I know what I want to do with it. Um, it's going to be really, really subtle colouring. It's going to have a very, very, very simple texture pattern. Nothing. I, I don't want to spoil the fibre that's there. Um, so that's that one. Uh, and then, of course, you can't go without buying a project bag. So from Little Bee Accessories, Kirsty, she said, I'm doing a special, John. You get a special price if you want a bag and a couple of skeins of yarn. And I said, aha. Uh -huh. She said, well, have a look and see what you think. Well, I saw the sheep on this one. And I thought, well, I've got to have the sheepy bag. And then I saw the lining and I thought, yeah, that's me. Loud. <laughs> loud. I can do loud. But I thought, well, I can't have the bag without buying yarn as well, because I love a bargain. So, I found this. This is Aladdin Sane. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 365 metres. And again, little bee accessories. It's a four ply sock yarn. What is it? What have I got about buying four ply sock yarns at the moment? But I wanted this for something bigger. I wanted this for a cowl or a shawl or something. And I thought, do I want two skeins the same? I decided I wanted something similar, but not exactly the same. And I found this. There's just a little hint of the orange. There's no black in this one at all. And this is called Not the Droid You're Looking For. And again, it's 80% Merino, 20% Nylon, 365 metres. And how did it get its name? Kirsty's dad named it because she dyed it up. It didn't come out quite the way she wanted. It was meant to be a sort of Star Wars-y colourway. And because it's not quite what she was wanting, he called it Not the Droid You're Looking For and the name stuck. So it's a one-off. It's not going to be repeated, but some of the colours are repeated in the other skein. So working the two of them together is going to be absolutely fine. That's going to give me 200 grams. Um, that's going to give me about 720, 730 metres. And I can quite happily design a shawl that will come in about that range. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and that and that finishes the stash for this time around which is not bad for me I have to say that's not bad for me at all Janet was almost equally as bad um, there were some amazing people. Oh, there is one more purchase. What bag did I put it in? 
I've forgotten what I bought some beads. I bought Christmas beads. And I bought little silver bells. Um and I had a plan for the little silver bells and it's all Christmas beads. So there are some candy canes, there are some Christmas trees, there are some jingly bells, and I was thinking of Christmas hats for the boys. I cannot tell a lie. Little silly beaded Christmas hats for the boys. I'll fit them in between now and Christmas somehow, um, and I'll try not to let the boys see them until nearer the time. And that'll be that. So, that finishes the stash. My throat is like... My throat is getting awfully, awfully dry. So I'm going to put in another wavy edit. And during the wavy edit, I'm going to run to the kitchen and get a cold drink. I'll see you after the wavy edit. Right, I'm back, folks. I went and grabbed a can of something fizzy from the fridge, threw some ice in a glass, and that's going to take the edge off my throat. And this is something which I have never seen a zero sugar version of before. Um, from my childhood, and a lot of Brits out there will remember the name Vimto, uh, which is a, a sort of mixed fruit punch. And lo and behold, they've not only taken it from a syrup, they've made it into something fizzy, and they've also produced a zero sugar version, so I had to try it. So your good health, everyone. And it tastes just the way it did when I was a kid, only fizzy. Wow. That's rather pleasant. Hmm. Happy days. Right. Works in progress. The first work in progress we have today is my re -knit of uh, La Tulipe et La Rose, which is three quarters of the way finished and within about 30 rows of finishing but each row is now I'm, I stopped in the middle of a row unfortunately um, each row is now taking about 35 minutes and it's it's purely and simply because there are so many stitches I'm up to about the 460 stitch mark um, and by the time you're following a lace, a lace pattern and that 400 and odd stitches it's starting to get slightly more difficult two yarns as I said last time the green is from Black Isle Yarns the pinks and purples from the fabulous Mr G it's fun knitting it again I did want to have this finished for Sunday but there were so many other things happening in and around the house and the family that I just got waylaid and didn't quite get to the end of it so what can I say I had this with me this was my knitting for Sunday I got a tiny little bit done I got some done in the car uh, I got some done last night and I'm going to do some more today. I'm going to try and get this finished quite quickly. It has been wonderful. The original knit, as you know, was prototyped in some three-stranded um, bright red acrylic, which was a gift from Eva Christie. Um, she, fa she found it in a charity shop and thought, ah, John will use that for the grandkids. No, I used it for prototyping. A sh I used some of it for prototyping a shawl, and I've got enough to go back and work with the grandkids. This in wool is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and there will be some photographs appeared later on of finished shawl. And you'll have seen finished shawls, the, the finished shawl potentially in the um, Perth event video. Because Eva, as one of my test knitters, was wearing the pale green version that she had knitted which was absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. Pardon me, nicely knitted. It came together really, really well. I'm looking forward to finishing this one and getting it blocked and adding it to the collection of um, exhibition shawls uh, that I've knitted for myself. 
I'm absolutely delighted with it. It's going really well. It gets a bit slow towards the end because the number of stitches goes up so well. Um, but work in progress I'm happy with? Definitely. And it's in my Avengers hey, <laughs> project bag. Woolly Sock Project Bag and Woolly Sock Project Bag has got a piece of green yarn that I don't know where it's come from. It has got my ball of magma worm, which came from my dear friend Carola Cass. And oh, almost lost the stitch there. I'll just save it. I'll fix it later. We are on sock number two of kids size dragon scale socks. These are being knitted in Ian's shoe size. And there is my finished object. First sock of a pair of socks for Ian. Um, foot length as measured against him. Leg length because that's as long as he said he wanted it. I don't want it any longer grander. So that's the size he has chosen. Um, I'm happy with that. It's not blocked, blocked or anything because I don't block socks. Um, I think this colorway is absolutely fantastic. It shows the stitch definition, the pattern definition for the dragon scale pattern really, really well. Um, let me just flip this out that way up. I'm really pleased with it. It's doing everything I wanted the pattern to do. Um, this is a 48 stitch sock in case anyone's wondering to take it down narrower for a kid's foot and Ian is a shoe size 2, 1 and 3 quarters going on 2 um, and it's really, this is a Corydale and Nylon blend that Carola has and it's, it's really soft, it's really bouncy it's really really nice um, one thing that has come out of the test knitting for these socks um, courtesy of Aileen Dickey Adams who is one of my test knitters Aileen has said to me um, the test knit that she did she had chosen a single plied yarn um, when she knitted it and she found that it didn't have the give that she wanted to make it comfortable enough on her foot when she finished So I'll go back into Ravelry and I'll edit the Ravelry entry and mention that so that anyone picking a yarn knows that they should be looking for something else. Um, the early response to Dragon Scales hitting the market is not bad. The number of people who have it stashed away as a favourite is growing steadily. Um, the number of people have started knitting it already is all right. Pattern sales are not incredibly fast neither are they zero so from that point of view i'm a happy man but we'll talk about that a little later on that's whip number two whip number three is over here Ugh. and i'm just going to stick it on the floor <laughs> because it is a rather large cone now some of you will recognize the cone um because you will have seen it before and at the moment, I'm knitting. First time in ages I've got something that's not in a circular. I'm on straights. I'm on some of my granny's ancient straights. And I have started a gent's waistcoat in my size in lamb's wool with some stranded, some colour work. And I decided that I wanted to run the colour work along the bottom of the fronts around the back and I wanted to, to run up the inside edge at the front uh, of this waistcoat. I like waistcoats, I hate long sleeves. Um, I don't, I, I've never been a fan of long sleeves but I like a woolly waistcoat. I like a pocket in my woolly waistcoat because I'm always looking for somewhere to stick a mobile phone or hankies. Um, so pocket flap knitted and studiously popped in at the back there um, 
knitting in my own size, knitting for the plus size man is always quite interesting. The stranded work patterns are not my own. Uh, I was given a book of Fair Isle patterns earlier in the year, an anthology of um, Fair Isle patterns to use when you're designing yourself. And I hunted through it and picked out the ones which I liked. The other colourway is this. It's a drops yarn. I think it's from one of the Fable colourways. Um, and I had two or three balls of that sitting. And I thought, you know something, the fact that that's just going to change colour on its own as I work my way up is perfectly fine by me. Um, it means that all the different parts of the cardigan, the colour work's going to look slightly different. Uh, the, the waistcoat is going to look slightly different. Do I worry about that? Not a jot. <laughs> it's fun. I'm enjoying it. And yes, I know I could have knitted both fronts and the back in one go on a big circular. But I didn't want to do that. Because when you're knitting for a man with a 58-inch chest, that gets awfully heavy on your hands if you're trying to work the entire body in one go. I've done it before several times and it becomes uncomfortable. And if it's uncomfortable for me, for some of the knitters I know with smaller hands, I could understand that that's the case for anyone who's trying to knit for someone who is a large gentleman, um, if they have even the slightest problem with anything athletic in their hands, it is it becomes painful um, and unpleasant. And eventually folks start to say, well, I don't think I'll bother knitting for him again. The motif up the side, I chose a small motif that I liked, the idea being that it will run up the side and the shaping for the front will run just inside that edge and it'll run all the way up to the collar line. Um, and I'm going to be happy with that. There's nothing incredibly complex in it. It's feeling quite good. The weight of fabric, it's a nice thin layer for throwing on in the winter. Um, I like my outside edges to be easy to sew up and easily identified. So I tend to have um, a slip stitch edge, both sides of a piece of stocking stitch like this for myself to make picking up and sewing up easier. Uh, and that was just a couple of evenings work because it's stocking stitch and it's just rattling away. When you sit watching the TV, it's absolutely fine. Um, this large cone I picked up last October from uh, Sean at King Craig when he had his warehouse open to the public and this is natural fantasy um, uh, where are we beige chitaro art mix PTA 61367. I've hunted for this on the Natural Fantasy um, website, what's left of it. The company, an Italian company, I think, have gone into administration and Sean bought up what was left of their stock. He's had it tested. He thinks it's lamb's wool. He's a great one for taking samples and sending them off to labs for testing to confirm that he knows exactly what he's selling to his customers. I love him for that. Um, allowing for the way he sources his yarns and buys up stock from places who are ceasing trading. He could be taking a gamble at some times on the things that he buys. And he does buy mixed fibres from time to time as well. Hello, Taz. I hear you. I'll come and see you shortly. You've been fed twice. Go and have a lie down. This is Taz, the ancient ginger pussycat in the house. Um, so that is the whips. And the whips are done. Oh, pardon me. So, uh, what can I say? Since we last met, 
There have been two pattern launches. The Dragon Scale Sock pattern launched about 10 days to a fortnight ago. And on Sunday, the 12th of November, the La Tulipe et la Rose Art Nouveau inspired shawl launched at the Perth Festival of Yarn Winter is Coming at Faster event. And to make it special, I launched it on the day with hard copy pattern booklets. So unusual for me, laid it out, did the desktop publishing, went to the printer, well, had them printed up, uh, stuck the logo on, stuck contact information on the back, had them properly folded and stapled and looking awfully professional and we used some of those for promotional purposes on Sunday. Um, I gave one or two to vendors who I thought would enjoy messing around with some of their own yarn and possibly knitting a copy of it. Um, there were a couple went out as prizes which on Instagram, I noticed a couple of the prize winners have already spoken about having won them. Uh, there were a couple of some pattern sales as well. I did, I was going to do a small discount on them and then I thought, let's well, stuff it, it's a launch, make it a, make it a decent discount. If you cover the cost of the printing today, uh, you know, that's good enough. So, did it a decent discounted price on the pattern to let get let people take it and show an interest. Having two versions of the shawl knitted there for people to touch, feel, look at, and the partially knitted version as well to, to mess around with worked well. Um, people enjoyed that. Loads and loads of questions. Um, some people looking at it saying absolutely beautiful, really, really wonderful, lovely shawl. Not for me, too complicated. Um, can concentrate on that amount of lace. And then they picked up a booklet, they looked inside it and they went, oh, it's broken down into little bits. All I need to do is remember that little pattern and that section of pattern. And then I do that one and that one and that one. And they're just alternated. And they thought, there were people who came back and said, you know something, that's that might be doable. Um, I had one an experienced knitter who said they would take it and they would take each chart on its own and use it as a practice tool to find out can they learn to knit lace, can they knit just that chart and have it as a finished swatch to help guide them through when they were knitting it again. Absolutely great idea, no problem with that at all. I had an inquiry from someone who was a crocheter rather than a knitter and said is there a crocheted version of the shawl available? And I had to admit that I hadn't created a crocheted version of the shawl. But we sat and chatted and we were looking at the charts and I said, you know, if you ignore the written instructions and you work on the chart, the yarn over symbol is where you're going to put in a chain to create a hole. The SSK and knit two together symbols are where you're going to create two crochet stitches together and then finish them with one chain holding all the tops together and she said oh yes yeah, so they are I said and that's where one becomes three and in another bit that's where three become one and she said oh right and is that it I said yeah those are the combinations of stitches all you have to do, do is decide on the base stitch you want to use would you like out cat Excuse me for a second, he's at the conservatory door and he's wanting out. Come on then, we can do that. Right, move this chair out of the way for you. Here you go. Come on. Let's go. Oh, it's too cold, you can back into the sitting room. Huh. Right. 
friend you turn out to be, crazy old Moggy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we had a lovely discussion about it, and in the end, I said, look, I don't have time to test crochet each of these charts to find out how they will look crocheted. Um, you just said you didn't want out. Forgive me, I'm arguing my 20-year-old ginger pussycat. What? The door is open. But there's too cold a wind for it to stay open. You're either out or you're in. Make up your mind. Well, you're in then. And if you shout in the background and upset the video, people are going to talk about you. Now, theoretically, I should edit that bit out. But those of you who know about Taz know that he's an old man and he's a cantankerous old man, a bit like me. Oh, it's chilly in here now because of that. So, I gave her a copy of the pattern and told her to take it off and try it. Email me and let me know how she gets on or if she has any questions. And it may be that after Christmas... Yeah. What? Heavens to Betsy Ross, pussycat. <laughs> um, it could be that she comes back and says, it doesn't work at all. We had a discussion about how you could create um, textured stitch effects as well to simulate the knit and purl effect. Um, so that could be an interesting development for that show because I've never actually considered how easy it would be from a charted pattern to swap it from knitting to crochet before. And it may be that during the Christmas holidays, I'm going to have to sit myself with a reasonable sized crochet hook and try um, the charts and make sure that they are viable as pieces of crochet myself. So that was that one. Um, so yeah, both patterns launched well. Um, what? Excuse me, I'll edit the next bit out. One, and we are back. Taz has sorted out, he's gone off out into the garden, and I've realised that it's getting pretty dull in here. Let's just add some electric light to make the recording a little brighter. Okay, um, so where was I? Yes, um, patterns have released. Um, they're both on Ravelry now and available for folk to download. The Dragon Scale sock is part of a knit along that I've created specifically for the Dragon Scale socks. Um, if you want to participate, you can. The Dragon Scale sock is really, really lucky. It has two specially dyed up colourways. One by Carola from Otherworldly Yarns called Magma Worm, which you've just seen. The other is, rather than a reddish dragon, it's a blue ice dragon yarn called Mysterious Dragon by Gemma from Snuggly Stars Yarns. Um, both are absolutely gorgeous. I really like both of them. Um, I've knitted with Magma Worm and I say it's a stunning base to work with and it's a really lovely colourway to knit up. Um, I have given both Carola and Gemma some single use Ravelry discount codes and if you want to match a pattern with a yarn Tell them that when you order your yarn and they will give you a Ravelry discount code which will give you a discount um, of 50% of the pattern price since you're buying the yarn and enjoy with my compliments. If you want to buy your yarn anywhere else or use something that you have in stash there's a slightly smaller discount available and the code for that is available in the knit along 
thread in my Ravelry group. Um, I will also stick it on the bottom of the screen here for you and that will be valid until the end of the cal. So join in, there are, there's a general chatter thread for the cal started at the moment, there's not a finished object thread. There are six projects on the go in the cal already. Um, I don't know how many we're going to end up with. And the prize at the end of it is Project Bag and Skin of Yarn by Lise Condis from Trailers Yarns, uh, which is absolutely gorgeous. Lovely summer oranges, um, wonderful colourway. I wish I could keep it. So that's prize number one. Uh, prize number two. Prize number two, I couldn't decide quite what I wanted to use. I wanted to have a second prize um, for the, the socks and I thought it would be appropriate to have some more sock yarn or another sock pattern. Um, so first prize is going to be some yarn. Second prize will be a choice of any Beardy Chill sock pattern that you wish. So you just tell me which one and I will gift it to you. So whoever comes second gets another Beardy Chill sock pattern. Uh, and those are the prizes for that one. Starting today, I'm going to open a knit along for the Tulip and the Rose Shawl. Uh, now the Tulip and the Rose Shawl also has specially dyed yarns accompanying it. They've been dyed by Grace O'Neill from Babel's Yarns. And you might remember Grace because she created a yarn which I named Fruit Salad um, for her. And she sent, uh, uh, having named it, I had to buy it because I loved it. In fact, I kept it here because I knew I was going to be talking about it today. Um, so, <laughs> I got it back out again, especially for today, so we could talk about it. And there it is. Uh, oh, that's lovely. I haven't turned it into anything yet because I'm just, I'm, I enjoy it so much. I, I keep it sitting here when I come out to work on patterns and things on the PC, uh, on my laptop. I pick it up and I squish it and I have a think about it. And I, oh, I don't know what I want to do with it. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> typical Grace. So, Babel's Yarns um, has two colourways. Photographs will be here as I'm chatting to you. One is called Tulip. One is called Rose. And these colourways were created by Grace after she looked at the stained glass panels which inspired the design. So these reflect the colours that were in the original stained glass panels. Um, I haven't arranged to buy the yarns myself yet from Grace, but I intend to because they are both really stunning and I would like to see the shawl re-knitted using those yarns. I think it's going to be so... They're, they're ethereal, they're watercolory, they reflect beautifully the translucence of the stained glass um, and the softer tones that appear in a lot of Art Nouveau design, but there's also that hint of strength um, in the rose colours from the rose glass. Um, and she's even reflected the, the dark of the lead um, with occasional really dark accents. She, it's just, they're wonderful. I love both yarns, um, so I'm going to have to add those to my collection. I know I should be reducing my stash, not adding to it. I'm, I've knitted this twice now, I'm going to knit it a third time. I think I'm going to have to knit it a third time. Uh, what am I going to do with them once I've knitted them? I don't know. I'll probably end up wearing them. Uh, <laughs> but that's fine. So, the Tulip and the Rose Cal starts today and will run until the last day in January 2018. So we'll give you 
what's left of November, all of December and January because lace knitting can take a little bit longer. If you're also running a normal everyday life, employment, family, whatever, that slows you down. So why try and rush it? Take your time, enjoy it. I will open a thread for the Cal in the Ravelry group. Please pop in and tell us you're casting on. Um, I will offer a Cal discount on the pattern. And Grace was talking to me last night and said that she thinks she will be offering, um, or she would definitely be considering a discount price for the yarn. Now, just while I say that, I grab my phone. And let's just have a look at last night's conversation. Uh, right, so, 100 gram skeins of yarn are currently coming in at 17 pounds plus postage and packing. Um, and they are really, really nice. Some of you may have seen them already because she did feature them on Instagram earlier in the week. That's, in, in fact, I'm saying it's 17 pounds. It's roughly 17 pounds at today's exchange rate. She's in the Republic of Ireland, so she's got them priced at 19 euros. So that's that's not bad um, compared to some because there's some sock yarns from some indie dyers are currently selling in the UK at about 20 to 22 pounds. So reasonable. So the Tulip and the Rose Cal running until the end of January. Prizes for the Tulip and the Rose Cal. Well, here's an interesting one. I am thinking... The first prize for the Tulip and the Rose Cal will be Oh I had to consider this really carefully. And the first prize for the Tulip and the Rose Cal could be yarn or it could be, oh, that would be devilment. Yes. Right. We will make it a yarn giveaway as the first prize. And I will pop photographs in the Ravelry group of the yarns which will be making up the first prize and I will be offering a second prize in the knit along of any other Beardy Chill shawl pattern. Okay, so there are other shawl patterns available, um, some of which stand alone in the Ravelry group and of course there is the one which is tied into Perth Festival of Yarns pattern collection with this skein and that's the Travelling Texture Shawl so depending on what you think you would like if you are the person that comes second you can delve in buy in to having one of those excuse me I'm going to top up this drink and that finishes the cows bit so what's next well um, the Rhodes Retreat Beardy Chills Rhodes Retreat May 2018 is ticking over nicely we are now looking at 32 confirmed bookings with another two potential um, who spoke to me on Sunday in Perth and are incredibly interested. So that's wonderful. They were going back to check dates and arrangements with other halves before they made their bookings. That's absolutely fine. I was talking to the hoteliers 
who are hosting the retreat uh, last week. And they're astonished that all these people want to come on a knitting retreat. They're delighted that all these people want to come on a knitting retreat. They're really looking forward to having us. And I have agreed with them that we are going to leave the bookings open until early 2018. Because there were people who spoke to me earlier in the year and said, oh, I don't know, I might have to wait until New Year to decide. Well, the hotel have said they'll keep space for us, provisionally. Um, and people can think about it and they can book up until January 2018. And I'll review then whether or not we're going to close the bookings. But if you're thinking about it and if you're interested, go to the beardychill.uk website. Remember, .uk, not .co.uk, just beardychill.uk. You'll find a short video there talking about the hotel. You'll find details of the draft itinerary. You'll find information about the tutors, a little bit about um, who's going to be there. It's myself, Nathan Taylor, the salt petition, and Ellie Landstrom from Scandium Knits, who's going to be our third body. And it's looking to be an absolutely stunning time. Now, we are in a really strong position because we have some absolutely stunning indie dyers who have signed up for the retreat. And the indie dyers who have said they're going to be with us are Lise Condis from Trailers. Grace O'Neill from Babel's Yarns, Carola Cass from Otherworldly Yarns. I had an inquiry just the other day from Hilary from the fabulous Mr. G. Um, and I have Eleni from Manicori Designs, who isn't a yarn dyer, but is a manufacturer of some of the most stunning project bags. Consequently, it looks as though I'm going to have to alter the itinerary to put in a small marketplace. Because we have enough yarn dyers and accessory manufacturers with us that we may have to just build in a little marketplace afternoon. Um, when all, If they decide to bring some yarns with them, they can all go out and display and we will quite happily sell to the assembled bodies and if any of the local knitters or crocheters who want to might want to come along and join us on a daily basis decide to sign up we will just suck it and see but an added bonus so not only do you get all this knitting there's going to be some lovely yarny goodness potentially there as well um fell Figuris Fugaris, I've forgotten how to spell his name, Phil, I apologise, who is Eleni's partner, has been speaking to me and has an absolutely stunning idea um, to brighten up the week. Uh, and I'm going to say nothing else about it other than the fact that I think the man has an incredible mind uh, and I consider him to be one of my dear, close friendly lunatics um, he's mad he's backing mad he has a wonderful idea and I've told him yeah we're going to go for it <laughs> so all of those of you who have already signed up heaven help you when you get there and I'll let Phil loose on you he's going to have you incredibly busy for at least one part of the week and that's Rhodes um, is there anything else I have to tell you well, there is. There's one last piece of stop press news. Beardy Chill stop press news. But I'm going to save it right to the bitter end. I'm going to put in a little community slot. Um, I always say that I'll answer any questions which come to me um, on Facebook, on Ravelry, whatever. Um, and that happens. I love getting your feedback and I love getting your comments. And I have to say... I appreciate the feedback, no matter what format it takes. Now, 
just let me rattle in here for a second. Um, grab my tablet. Come on, get out of there, you silly machine. Okay. Um, I've had a couple of nice pieces of feedback on the stereo microphone setup on this camera. Um, most of which has been positive. I've only had one person who said, I didn't really notice a difference. I've had somebody who said, yes, I noticed the difference, but it also amplified some of the background noise. Absolutely fair comment. Now, I love seeing comments after things, and I got this comment, which I have to say is extremely fair. It was from Caroline H on YouTube, and she said, not your be po best podcast, I'm sorry to say. A lot of the footage of the Knit Yarn show seemed to be at a poor angle. We got great views of the ceilings, but not as much of the actual booths. Did enjoy seeing your Knit projects, though. Um, and Caroline, you are completely right. I hadn't noticed that the chest mount I was wearing had slipped and the camera was showing an absolutely god-awful angle. For that, I apologise to the viewers. Um, you're quite right, and thank you for telling me about it. I knew it had happened when I went to put the podcast together, but I had to decide, did I miss everything out completely, or did I still did I risk putting it in and still trying to create a taste of the event? And I decided to go for the latter. Um, but absolutely fair comment. I appreciate your comment, and I thank you for it. I, I'd much rather have people were being honest and telling me things like that than saying absolutely nothing. Um, there was another brilliant comment from Kirsty R. Pompey, my son who is six, would love to visit there. He's been obsessed since he was given a book about the history of it. <laughs> I love replying to these comments. They're absolutely super. So, wonderful. It's nice to hear from you. It's nice to get comments. Um, I get creative comments. I get them on Facebook. I get them on Instagram. I get them on YouTube and it's it's nice. But YouTube have changed recently. Oh, pardon me. Oh, itchy right on the edge of my nose. Oh, sorry. That was an incredibly intense little bit of itch. Oh, <laughs> still going. Sorry, you don't want to know about my my itchy proboscis. Um. YouTube have changed the way their community notifications appear. Um, and one of the things that's changed over the last two or three weeks is that they actually tell you who your latest subscribers are as they appear, which is absolutely wonderful. So since the last video went live, I'd like to say a big beardy cheer, cheer welcome to, and I'm not going to do this every time, it's just because it's a novelty this time. So hello to Ava Arnadottir, Holly Durta, Rachel Small, Simona Scravalieri, Homespun Tools, Gabrielle Leal, Jess Davis, Pat Hoyle and CJ Creative Life. Absolutely wonderful. Um, since the last podcast went up, there have been 15 new subscribers, which is absolutely wonderful news. And um, subscribers always vary. You gain a couple, you lose a couple. And podcasting is like that. You can't be everyone's flavor of the day all the time. That's absolutely fine. Some people like to dip in for a couple of months and then go away for a couple of months and then come back for a couple of months. Each to their own. Um, I'm a great believer in, you know, having diversity as the spice of life. So that's wonderful. But to have all these people actually appear popping up as notifications day after day saying, hello, we're new. It's wonderful. Um, those are the names for people who wanted their subscriptions to be visible. I know there are 15 new subscribers, but not 15 names because not everybody wants their subscription status to be visible. That's fine. You know, it's absolutely and perfectly fine. Um, I'm just delighted that you're out there and that you're willing to be there. So that takes me to the end of that bit. The only thing I haven't spoken about is 
what I'm viewing, um, what podcast watching have I been doing, what podcast listening have I been doing? Well, I have been listening to um, Keith Craft, as always, Louise Hunt. I like to hear Louise when she puts out a new podcast. I like to listen, or I like to watch all sorts of things. And as of the last podcast, I had done very little watching. In the last week or so, I have managed to fit in some. I noticed a new podcast up from Helen Duffin, Sprite 966, so I watched that. Pardon me. Um, I saw a new podcast up from Nathan Taylor this week. And he had said he was planning to podcast this week because I was chatting to him um, on a video chat on Monday, um, doing some of the planning for roads. And he was saying he said he had an episode about to come out, and when it appeared, I thought, "Oh, I'm going to have to watch that." Um, and the next morning, I woke up with the most incredible sore back. I don't know what I'd done. It must have been the way I was lying in my bed. So I got up and ran a hot bath lay in the bath and I thought oh I haven't brought a book so I grabbed my phone and there was the notification for Nathan's new episode so I put it on and I lay back and let the hot water ease off the muscles in my back and listened to Nathan as he chattered on and at the end of it I thought I enjoyed that I'll post my comments so I posted my comments saying how I was spending my morning and it was a pleasure to have him join me (laughs) and I just leave comments the same as I would if I was chatting to him in in person. Um, And his response... His response did have me... um, It did have me giggling. Uh, It was something along the lines of, "Mm, Yes, I'm glad to have... (laughs) Glad to have shared your bath time with you. (laughs) Poor man, he must think I'm off my trolley. Well, I know I'm off my trolley. Um, It's just confirmed it for Nathan. And that was me. That took me through to the end of the week. We came back up the road. We got home at about half past ten on Sunday night from Perth. We came into the house. We collapsed into chairs, made a cup of tea. Janet said, I'll go to my bed. I've got work in the morning. And I watched a little bit of a TV show and started to fall asleep in the chair and joined her soon after. Yesterday was a catch-up day. And today has been a morning of video chat and general blethering to my friend Eva Christie. Hi, Eva. And we were talking about some of the conversations we'd had with folk on Sunday at the event and I was telling her how much I'd enjoyed myself Um, and we were (coughs) talking about the the range of vendors and people who had come along to the event and how big a laugh it had been and time just vanished (laughs) what was supposed to be a sort of 10 minute video chat um, just as a sort of how have you been? Uh, did you get up the road safely? Evolved into an hour's worth of general knitting banter and talking about patterns and talking about yarns that we like. <laughs> I must admit, as Eva said, I could talk for Scotland. If there was an Olympic talking team, I would apply for it. Uh, and that's absolutely fine. So I've had a lovely chat with Eva this morning. I've had a lovely chat with you guys this afternoon. I'm going off now to start cooking tonight's dinner. And at some point I'll come back out here and I will tidy up the woolly mess that I have left on the table. And I will look forward to seeing you all again in a couple of weeks' time. But until then, feel free to get in touch with me if you have any questions or anything else. Please, please, please sign up and take part in the knit-alongs. It's so nice to share knitting with other people. If you've liked this, give it a thumbs up. 
Um, if you're here for the first time and you want to come back, hit the subscribe button. I'm delighted to see you. And until the next time, this is Beardy Shield saying, keep happy, keep healthy, keep knitting. Cheerio.